Hello and welcome to another developer update for Total War Minigame. I am Sunday and it's been a while, really like 5 weeks since I last had a dev update for the Total War Minigame. And people have been asking me questions like how the game is going and whether I'm still developing it and how long does it, is it going to take to finish the game. And yes, uh, I am still developing it though as it turns out. Uh, it really is going to take a lot more than two months to develop the game to full completion. Um, who knows, it takes that long to, make, to create Total War, right? So all credit to Creative Assembly for creating Total War. It was an amazing game. I actually appreciate the developers of the game a lot more as I created uh, this uh, scaled down geometric versions of the game. Anyway, I'm not worried about how long it's gonna take. Um, it will take as long as it needs to. And if Kenshi can take 12 years to develop, it was just released like last week, then I'm not really worried about what it will be finish because it will be. So let's talk about the overall state of the game right now. So uh, this is what you guys are seeing. Um, it is about. 6,000 troops on the battlefield. It can really simulate 12,000, but the frame rate is gonna drop uh, quite significantly. So, 6,000 is a sort of stable level in which we can go about 60 frames per second. We also have a new battle banners, as you can see right here. Um, since uh, people in the forum doesn't seem to like the small icons of the three kingdoms too much, so we're coming back to banners, and it seems. I seem to enjoy it a little bit better than the small icons um, and it also doesn't obstruct the unit itself as well as the banner is slightly raised so you see both the unit information but also see what is the formation that it is in and we have two bars one is the health bar and one is the leadership bar um, the health bar in red is functioning, but there's absolutely no leadership right now So all of these troops are just gonna be like go oh, and fight to the death and there's there's no routing mechanism But we're gonna fix that uh, in uh, the future uh, And of course we have arrows uh, As you already see in the beginning of the video The arrows gonna stick to the, to the warriors uh, for a while like this uh, until they slowly and slowly disappear um, they look kind of comical right now, but, but I think I enjoy it. Uh, please comment what you guys think about this. So let's talk a little bit about the collision system and how to build units that can crash into each other in a realistic manner and how to scale the system up effectively to support tens of thousands of troops on the battlefield. And we know that one of the main advantages of the game is that the shapes of every unit actor is very simple. Um, they are circles, right? So circle collision checking is very simple. All you need to do is to measure the distance between the two centers and you compare with the sum of the radii. So you can see for the example uh, on the left right here, because uh, these two are far apart, the sum of their radii will not make up their distance and we treat them as not colliding. But for this example, however, uh, because they are so close, uh, the two radii will actually have a small overlap. So if you sum them up, they will be bigger than the distance between the two centers. It is that simple. Um, and that is the collision system detection of our entire game. And you will be surprised at how far such a simple system can take us when it comes to game making. So now that we have the collision system and know when the two objects collide with each other, we have to model the pushing of the two actors. Um, and for this is also very simple as well. Um, because there are circles and they're moving, they're just snooker balls. And for snooker balls, there's nothing better than using the conservation of momentum equations to calculate the velocity and direction of the actors after the collision. It is a very simple equation. Um, you know, MA, VA, MB, VB, and also the two angles. It's very easy to reason out the velocity of each actor after the collision. And the behavior of the system works surprisingly well. You can see that when the two units collide into each other like this, 
they sort of perfectly cancel their forces to the remote conservation. And also, it retrieves a provision of paper that will sort of initially find the space besides the unit to occupy. And that looks the fighting behavior pretty good to me, and I'm sure pretty happy about this. So what about the cavalry charge? Well, you see, since the conservation of momentum equations already have the weights of the actor, all you need to do is to simply scale the weight uh, or the mass of the horses up by 5 times, and you can see that the cavalry charge just totally tears the formation of the infantry apart, because the infantry just simply doesn't have enough momentum to kind of stop the cavalry charge coming forward to them. Um, I still leave the HP of the cavalry relatively weak here, so they're dying fairly quickly from the infantry as you can see that once the infantry recover they're just quickly killing the cavalry right on the spot, uh, but we're gonna fix that later. So what about bracing? How do we simulate the effect of bracing against the cavalry charge? It is also very simple. What we need to do is to increase the weights of the infantry to be bigger than the horses while they are in the bracing mode. And as you can see right here, the cavalry charge leading directly into the square. It's just like hitting a brick wall. And the cavalry charge was much less devastating to the infantry formation. And they clean up the cavalry with ease. So now that we have our collision and our pushing system in place, let's talk about how to scale the game up to tens of thousands of troops. You see, even though our calculation for collision is pretty simple, it doesn't really mean that it's gonna scale up really well. And the reason for that to the computer, every troop is just an X and Y position. The computer actually has no good sense of which of the units that are close to them it doesn't know that this guy and this guy and this guy are close to the red troops unless the computer actually calculates the distance between them compared to every other unit. And even though this works really fine if you have a small number of units, as you get bigger and bigger, the number of collision actually blow up to square complexity. Now, if you study computer science, then this is actually pretty much what you do not want in your system because it simply doesn't scale up very well because for every doubling of the troops you actually need four times more resources and we actually cannot afford this in the long run so how do we actually solve this problem well if before we even measure the collision we actually have a sense of which troops we are close with then we only need to check the collisions between the one we are checking and the troops that are close to him, right? Um, what if before we measure the collision, we actually put all the troops into buckets? So say uh, this guy and this guy is in this bucket, this guy is in this bucket. All we need to do to put um, all the troops into buckets is just a simple division calculation. And even though we need to perform division calculations for every single troops, eventually what we know is uh, which troops are in which buckets. So now, when we check collisions for this red guy, we only need to check the collision between him and all the troops in the nine buckets surrounding the red guy. And by doing this, we reduce the number of collisions drastically. In my system, I try to use a size of the buckets big enough so that it can contain the entire troops, but also small enough so that only a maximum of 16 troops would be in the 9 adjacent buckets and 16 is still a really big number with uh, using it up to 105 calculations for every soldier but it scales a lot better you can see that with the same resources we can already simulate twice more the number of troops um, uh, for example right here with 100,000 calculations um, for the old system we can only simulate up to less than 500 troops, but now we can simulate a thousands, and it's only gonna get better over time. So you can see that if you keep moving this red line upward, um, when the old system can simulate a thousand troops, this red line system can simulate 5,000. So it's gonna be a big win for us in the long run. So as the title of the video suggests, today we're gonna take a look at Epaminondas and the Battle of Lutra. Um, 
And what we are really trying to solve here is that now that we have a good system of collision checking, can we still do better? Is there anything in particular about the ancient battles that can actually help us reduce the collision candidates even further? Mind you that what we have done all this time just now, it can apply to any system with circle checking in environment. It can be billiard snooker, it can be ancient warfare, it can be anything. But is there anything about ancient battles in particular that can actually help us reduce the amount of collision even further? So let's take a look at the Battle of Lutra here. This is the Battle of Lutra at half scale. I cannot do full scale because doing it full scale is just going to blow up the frame per seconds of my CPU. But for half size, it is okay. And as you can see right here, the Spartans line up in a traditional one line formation. And every block of troops has 12 ranks. And they also place their best Spartan troops on the right side. As with the tradition of all Greek cities, they always want to place their best troops on the right side as the place of honor. And of course, on the rightmost side is King Cleombotus of Sparta um, leading his 300 Spartans um, on this right side um, of the battle. So that is the Spartan formations, um, and against this formation, Epaminas actually decided to throw a curveball. Uh, instead of the right side, he actually put all his phalans, the Theban Sacred Band, on the left side, and he actually stacked them in 50 ranks on a smaller front. And for the rest of the troops, he only stacked 5 ranks, and they kind of scatter and slowly curve backward like this. And this is called the oblique order formation. The idea is that um, you concentrate all your forces on one flank and his hope is that if he can quickly crush the right side of the Spartan Hoplite Phalanx, then the rest of the army is not going to be able to reinforce um, this right side because Phalanx is very slow to turn. And once the best front troops are routed, the rest of the army will quickly lose hearts and they will simply rout. And that is exactly what happens in the Battle of Lutra. So what is it about the Battle of Lutra in particular that can help us with the collision system? You can see right here that this is this uh, 50 rank mass of soldiers, a massive number of troops, is 2,000 troops sending in a one massive block. And if you're one of the guys in the middle of the block, you're gonna likely going to feel pretty safe about it, right? Because the enemy is not going to reach you unless it has to go pass through all the soldiers in the border. So what if instead of checking the collisions of every single troops, we only check the collisions of the troops in the border? We call these troops are in danger. And only when the endangered troops are actually touched by the enemies, do we go and check the collisions of the inside units? And you can already see that this kind of system is going to help us massively with the number of collision. Because even though this is 2,000 troops, the border, the number of border troops are actually very small. It's a front of 40, a back of 40, and two sides of 50. So it's only 190 troops to check collision for in a block of 2,000 troops standing. Here. So let's do an experiment to see how such a system might work in combat. And as you can see right here, um, as the troops in the outer side start to collide with the enemy, more and more troops will be marked as in danger, and their collision will be checked to ensure that they can also be pushed and pulled and be damaged on. You see that even when they're fighting, the majority of Theban troops right here um, on the back are actually not colliding with enemy. And by turning the collision system checking off, when we are sure that they are not colliding, we save a ton of resources that would be used elsewhere. And when we turn um, the purple marking off, the behavior looks quite normal. Um, well, except that we kind of have the outnumbered Spartan line actually kind of pushing the Theban Superman backwards here. But this is a bug in the system, and I'm going to talk about it uh, when I fix it in the next video. 
So that is it for the update on the current state of the game. Um, it is still restricted to battle phase, but it is a pretty good state. Um, though some people do ask me, where is the game going? Um, how far do we want to take this? Um, as far as it needs to take, I think. But I do have two sort of concrete directions on, on where this project can go. And the first one is for this game to become an ancient battle simulator. Um, this is one of the explicit goals that I initially want to pursue with this project. I want to re-simulate battles at scale, and the ultimate goal will be the battle of Changpin between Baichi and Chaofuo, uh, in which if the historical number is to be believed, then it's 1.1 million troops in a battlefield. It's a massive battle, and it's probably not going to be possible to generate at real time at uh, this scale on a personal computer barring some massive linear algebra work with the GPU and parallel computing. Um, but for the video format, we actually don't need to be real-time. We can totally model better as block, like what we already have with the software. Um, we can move the block around, uh, trying to get the timing right. And once we have the modeling completed, we can just sit back, perform battle replay, and re-render the battle in high definition. The other direction is to build an AI. I want to use AI to build an agent that can rationally play Total War game. Now I'm not claiming to be the best Total War player out there, uh, but I do think that Total War AI has, some, has many issues, especially with the Siege AI. So I want to see if we can use some of the existing and recently successful techniques with reinforcement learning and neural networks uh, to play this game uh, as AlphaSaw was successful with StarCraft 2. Um, and I think the good news is that we already have the back, uh, back end, not the back line, we already have the back end of the infrastructure. Um, the AlphaSaw team has to, that, has to do a lot of work to ext extract the data that they need for the StarCraft 2 game to get the information from the back end. But we already have the back end. I have the bag and I hold the code for it. Um, so we can extract whatever information that we want from the system um, and then feed into the AI for our training purpose. So it will be interesting to see if one, it is possible, and two, how is it going to perform against human players? Um, it's probably going to take a lot, of, a lot of time to do more and more research and effort, but anything takes time these days. So that is not something to be worrying about. It's going to take as long as it needs, but it's going to be a fun journey. I also want to do the campaign map. The problem with the campaign map approach is that I don't know if I can actually do this without CA wires knocking on my door. Um, and campaign map is like a totally different game, a totally different balancing. And it's actually not something that I'm interested in. Um, I'm only going to be interested in campaign if you can sell this game on Android for five dollars, which is not one of my plan right now, so it is a potential, but we're gonna shelf this for now and focus on these two directions. So that's about it for the update. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I think I want to try to make it once a month for the time being, but once I get more and more resources, then perhaps we can make the updates a little bit more frequently. Um, be sure to subscribe and press the bell button to receive new updates and stay tuned for the next video. Cheers!